six. Hawkins, get in that oh, tunnel and check it out. The rest of the team will wake up. 2003's Viet Cong is a Czech game attempting to be a fun, semi-realistic shooter about the Vietnam War. I say attempting because... Holy Jesus! What is that?! But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Made partly by the hidden and dangerous people, Viet Cong as you play as Steve Hawkins, a US Special Forces Sergeant sent to Nui Peck as a replacement. So here it is, my new home. Throughout the game, you'll be tasked with leading your six-man team in various offensive and defensive operations against the Viet Congs and the NDA, braving heavily trapped jungles, interacting with locals, and thwarting enemy attacks. Before that, you can play the tutorial and have fun pissing off the drill instructor. What the good God is wrong with you, shithead? I'm the boss here. You will do as I say or I'll tear you a new asshole. You fucking cheese dick! I told you, don't shoot at the dead! Hawkins, you brain dead idiot. I told you to use those fucking mines, but no, Mr. Smartass thinks he can do it his way. Ah! Immediately, Viet Cong's focus on characters takes center stage. You're a sergeant, a squad leader, and as such, you have a team of people you can rely on, more or less. First off, it's not. Me fight with Viet Minh against French, but me no like commies. They damn son of a bitch. He's not. He's your point man, he leads the whole squad. The maps aren't exactly labyrinthic, but he can spot traps and warn you when the Viet Congs are nearby. Failing that, he's the one to catch the first bullet. You could lead the squad yourself, but you can also relegate everything to this guy. Come on! We gotta go support the guys! These guys know where the action is. Follow them. Yes, Chauncey. Second, it's Crocker, the medic. He can heal you and your team. Without him, you'd be stuck using medkits yourself. Then, Bronson, engineer. He's the one that blows stuff up and carries ammo for everyone. The fourth, Radioman, source of all artillery and most autosaves. And finally, Hornster, gunner. He occasionally shoots his M60. Hornster? Yeah? Shut the fuck up! Running the show is Captain Rosenfield, who briefs your team before every mission and to whom you report various time during each level. This focus on character was pretty much unheard of in 2003, especially in historically set shooters, but Viet Cong has a cast of distinct characters, each with a different personality and superb voice acting. Hawkins is quite a character too, following up every looted piece of intelligence with a quip. This propaganda is pretty lame. No stamp? That won't get far. Wow, looking good. Nice portrait, Mao. The next one will be awarded posthumously. Uncle Stalin. Pretty cute. Probably neck shot the kid after the picture was taken. <laughs> to notice that, despite having a team, there's no team management. The missions are pretty linear and scripted, with little to no freedom except the occasional 10 meters of alternative path. Before every mission, you can interact with your office, then, by visiting the shooting range, you can change your loadout. The arsenal at your disposal will keep growing larger with each mission, having both more US weapons and captured ones. The purpose of Nui Peck is to train the CG, basically turning locals into a militia to fight along the Cambodian border. So, a lot of missions have you helped the locals in a way or another. The first mission is very simple. You get shot by a sniper, shoot the sniper back, and head back home. More of a mood setter than a proper level. So then, the second mission starts. Just a simple recon mission to locate VC supplies. Seems simple enough. Ah! Get him! Oh! 
When gathering footage for the review, I told myself that if younger and significantly more retarded me beat the game on hard, it couldn't be that hard. This looks like some important information. Well, let me illustrate my point by showing the very beginning of Mission 3. We did! We beat the shit out of them! Yeah, but I bet they've moved troops down from the north to cover their losses. In fact, well, I wouldn't be surprised if they try another assault! Come! Damn it! Kill the bastard! What the fuck is that?! Yeah. Difficulty in this game gives the enemy more damage, health, better reaction times and sight. And it's all good until you come across a night level or a heavy jungle level or god forbid both at the same time. The trees won't even do you the favor of speaking Vietnamese before gunning you down. And don't think you can just snap fire back, the aim punch locks your camera in place so you can't even trade damage. Not only the time to kill is incredibly low, enemies see you through bushes and their grenades make no noises, but also every time you heal your maximum health is reduced, quick saves are limited and your squad members can die too, causing a game over. By the way, if Crocker is not around or incapacitated, the only way to heal yourself or your allies is with single uses med packs that you need to loot off the enemy. If they don't drop any while an ally is wounded, you're forced to reload a previous save. Defort! Yo, Defort! Defort! And this is only hard. Wanna see Vietnam difficulty? Who was that? <laughs> what is that? Other than the campaign, you can play quick fights, which are somewhat customizable terrorist hunt style levels. No quick save, lootable medkits or fire support, just a group of enemies to kill and if you so choose a squad to accompany you. Difficulty aside, the gunplay is pretty good. You only have one main weapon, but they're all pretty little. Enemies react to localized damage with different animations, die for cover when they feel exposed, lean to shoot and so on. Guns are also extremely accurate while aiming with them, especially the SMGs which usually get a lot of recoil for balance reasons. Two weird things I like to point out however. Firstly, with most weapons, you don't really use your sights. Instead, you slightly tilt the weapon upwards and only use the front sight to aim, which is some Rhodesian rebel shit, but does give you a clear sight picture. And secondly, the game has trouble handling going prone when you aren't on a perfectly flat surface. Returning to the campaign, it has a wide variety of levels. Defenses of Nui Peck, VC harassment, shielding the locals, tunnel fights, helicopter rides, and even a jeep level. Nice one, Hawkins. The missions themselves can be multi-stages odysseys that keep draining your maximum health or relatively simple treks through the jungle. It's pretty good overall, just do yourself a favor and play it on normal, it's a lot more forgiving. If you do want to play it yourself, you can get it for free from my abandonware, links in the description. And I guess pause the video because I'm about to spoil the ending. You promised me that leave and I'm still here. There better be something big brewing. The final mission is an attack on Nuipek itself. It starts with the NBA attacking the perimeter and mass and you using just about any weapon you can find to fight them back. But in the morning a tank platoon arrives. You take one out, abandon the camp and have some phantoms bomb it. And it ends with an hamburger hill reference. Looking out the door of that slick, past the gunner's leg at the outgoing tracer fire from his coax down into the green jungle canopy whipping by just below us was about the last thing I can remember about that camp. And you know what? Don't mean nothing, man. Don't mean nothing. Good taste, devs. But we're not done yet because there's an expansion, Fist Alpha. This one has you play as Douglas Warren, the sergeant that Hawkins later replaces. He's nowhere near as creepy as Hawkins, but I like him more. I especially love his shouty lines while under fire. They really capture how the player feels when Crocker takes its sweet time with the medkit. Crocker! 
As you might have guessed, this campaign is a prequel. It shows the Green Beret establishing contacts with the locals, New Peck being built and its rocky early days. It has some more character moments and two new guys, Nguyen, Protonat and Lim, whom I love. This campaign ends with the squad launching an off-the-book assault on some NVA artillery in Cambodia that is targeting Nui Peck. So you take the guns out, call an airstrike on their camp and leave. The game ends with a monologue by Doug. All of a sudden Charlie isn't hiding behind every tree. Only occasionally does he bother the villages of our new mountaineer friends and allies, but we usually take care of that quickly. Yeah, dear Uncle Ho, the Green Berets have arrived. And an unceremonious text popping up saying, by the way, dies Le Mao. Aside from the campaign, there's a couple new additions. First of all, new guns, most of which disappointing. Secondly, new quick fight and multiplayer levels. And lastly, another addition is the ability to take a squad with you when playing quick fights as the Vietnamese, although these guys don't exactly have any personality. Now, we would be done if it weren't for the fact that there's another official expansion. It's called Red Dawn and it adds a single mission that... sucks. Also a bunch of multiplayer maps, one of which has a mode with bots. Oh, by the way, multiplayer still works with a small fix, so if you're interested, just check the description. It's been 18 years and you can still play, although there aren't always players around. So that was Vietcong. If only it had destructible vegetation, an AI without X-ray vision, or a less janky squad AI, it would be perfect. At times, it reminds me of the worst parts of Ghost Recon. But even with these flaws, it's pretty damn good. In my opinion, it doesn't hold a candle to Hidden and Dangerous 2, but it's still worth playing, and amazingly, it still holds up in many aspects. I can't think of a single player game that does Vietnam better. With just a couple of changes, it could go from great to flawless, and thankfully they made a sequel. Is it the perfect game? <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no. Thanks for watching. See ya. How's it going, buddy? Lousy, man. They bent us over and fucked us real good. Where'd you get hit? Some Hickville called Mui Peck. You probably never heard about it. Betraying locals and kicking Charlie's ass for over a year. The county bastards didn't like it too much, I guess. Yeah, they finally overran the camp. Had to call fire in on ourselves. Hey, Bronson! Master Bronson! Bronson!